Thanks for checking out the video today, everyone. What I'm gonna be showing you in this video is how to create a landscape and sky mask for your building. Now, I haven't been able to get this to work too well with people, and I haven't been able to get it to work with the cars or the trees. So this really is only going to focus on the building, but hopefully you guys can take this information and there can be some cool results that come out of it. I hope that at some point it will be possible to use one of these masks to make a very rough photo match with a drone video that you can put the building onto. Even if it's not perfect, I think that it would be very cool to at least show people where the building's going to be and rotating around it. So if this interests you at all, I hope you stay to the end of the video and I hope you learn something. To get started, we're just gonna have a basic Lumion scene. The simpler, the better here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this SketchUp model. So I'm gonna go Lumion, and I'm gonna put this up on the 3D warehouse. There's there's nothing too special about it. I, I had got it off the warehouse. I made a couple small alterations to it, and then I just brought it, I'm just bringing a Lumion now. There's really nothing too crazy about it. Landscape mask. Okay. I'll just call this one because I had already had it imported. So I'll drop this here. And then I have to make the actual mask. So this is going to be a little bit different because with Lumion's render passes, you can actually export them once you have your finished scene. But with this one, we're actually be making our own render pass because the one that I want doesn't exist as a feature in Lumion. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you something that is a little bit weird about Photomatch that I find it very strange. So hopefully you guys will stick around and check that out. But for now, we'll create this mask. So what I do is I save this file exactly as this is. So I'll just call this mask. As you see, I'd already saved it like that. And then I'm going to draw a circle on the ground, maybe like this big. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to put a black color on it. I'm going to click here. I'm going to hit M, Control C to duplicate it, but keep the other one in the same spot. And then I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. And then I will click on the outer edge of my flat circle. Tools, follow me. And then you click the other face. So this just creates a sphere. And even though it's pretty rough, it doesn't actually make a big difference. Just one second here. I actually might just uh, hide this for now. Okay, that's done. And then everything else here, we're gonna be making this white. So grab everything, just like that. And I think that that should be, that should be everything. And I am just gonna go and delete all of the glass that we see. And the reason is, is that we want to be able to see through the windows. So right from this angle right here, you can see through two panes of glass behind the house. And we want to keep that intact. Oops. This will also be up on the 3D warehouse if people want to give this a try, but don't want to spend any time on it. Uh, this. So I'm just going to keep looking through and make sure that there's no pieces of glass that I missed, but that looks good. So I'll save this and then we're going to go right back into Lumion. And once we get to this, we're not actually going to import the model by itself. We're going to use it as a variation. And the mask is right here. I'll call this mask one. Oh, oops. I need to unhide this. View. Oh, unhide. I always think it's in view. There we go. So I'll just re-import that. Make this all black. This, anything that's not this black dome here, we're going to make white. Let's go like this. I'll just copy this and I'll just make sure this is applied to everything. I think it's just those two. Okay. I will flip back into variation one, movie. Now let's 
go right about here. Let's go something like this. I'll make this 10 seconds long. Oh, and I'm also going to change this. So I think that's looking pretty good. I'm also going to copy the clip. Paste the clip here. And then we should have two identical videos. And with this one, I'm just going to pick just something that's overcast. The one thing I did find about this that was kind of strange is that if you have the sun right here, then sometimes you get this almost like this lens flare effect. And it does not look good when you mask it out because it looks like this, the flare kind of comes out of nowhere. So I'll just be cautious of that if you are doing this. Maybe I'm actually going to throw some quick textures on these as well just to make it look a bit better. Okay, it still looks awful, but whatever. What we can do, so let's just say that we're gonna go with this landscape mode, no big deal. Or sorry, the with this with this render style. That should be fine. Now this is the fun part. We're gonna go at effect, object, variation control. And I think I might actually have to add this to the other one too, because I make this two. Oh no, okay, that one stays good. And you can kind of see where we're going with this. So we're going to make it so this is just kind of like a floating white object on the, the black background. The color correction is important. Actually, maybe not this one. Contrast is definitely important. I typically bring the limit low up and the limit high down because it just kind of helps separate these out. The saturation I didn't find really did that much. Gamma correction, it helps a little bit, but... There was a couple of effects that I thought worked way better than I thought. One of them was definitely shadow, but the other one was actually fog. Fog worked really well for this because you can change the brightness like that. So you can just completely eat the background and that's looking pretty good already, but let's keep, let's keep playing around with it. I'm also going to add in shadow. So we'll get rid of the Omni Shadow. The Omni Shadow is what causes a lot of this ambient occlusion here. So if we just get rid of that, and I think the other thing that I did for this is the, the sun. So if you pull this down, oh no, it's too far. And then the exposure. Yeah, so once you do it like this, it's kind of cool because no matter how high you increase this exposure, what we've done to the background is just it's just too dark to even be increased by it. And you just get this ability to mask this in and out. So you can crank the exposure up. There's no right way of doing this. As long as you get a separation like this, it's going to be enough to make the mask. You can really see how this is taking shape though. So, oh yeah, this is what I was talking about. So now that you have to go in and do the uh, variation control in this one it sets it to the other one yeah variation one so this is what we have i'm going to render this out then we'll hop into premiere and after premiere i'm going to show you a couple cool little things that i found while studying this all right so we have made it through the sketchup portion and also the lumion portion the premiere portion is not difficult if you are using premiere this is going to be very easy to follow along if you use something like davinci resolve don't worry. If you just look up how to use an alpha mask, you should be able to find a video very easily. I can't speak on how that software works, but it shouldn't be too bad. I have the final render here. So this is the color pass. And I also have the mask here. So as you can see, it came out quite nice. But something I will mention is that I do render these at quad HD, which is the 2560 resolution. The reason is, is that I find with Lumion, if you get a render pass and you put it into a clip, if you do 1920, you get almost like this line along the edge where it doesn't quite overlap. It's very minor, but it's enough that it, it kind of throws you off. So I always go with the quad HD and I, I don't have a problem with it like that. Once we're at this point, we drag in the mask. 
and then we drag in the color. Now, for some reason, when I was dragging in the mask first, it was making it so that it wasn't the same size. It's probably a very easy solution, but I don't know Premiere that well. So I just dropped the mask in first and then it worked. I also have this photo that I just took from the internet and I'm gonna use that as the background. Now, if you're doing this in Premiere, at least the way that I'm gonna show you, it is important that it has mask, color, and then the background. And the reason is, is that we are going to throw a, go to my effects, track, matte, key. We're gonna drop this onto color and then we're going to choose the matte video three, Matt Luma. And so you can see what happens when we do that. I'll click on the background image. I'll scale this up to 200. Let's go a little bit further. Something like that. So I think that looks good enough. And as I said, this is, you know, it's not perfect, but it does work well enough. I'm going to be testing it in the future with how to maybe get a drone video in there. I think that it could be possible with image overlay and being kind of clever about how it works. It won't be as good as something like Blender, but it will definitely work. And I think that it is actually feasible for people that just want to create like a 30 second drone shot and maybe drop their building in. So that might be kind of cool. And I will play around with that. The This is the end of the tutorial, but there is actually a part that I want to segue to before I end the video. Okay, for all of you that are probably like, it's kind of strange that you have to do this. I want to show you something that's actually in Lumion that I find very strange about why this functions like this. So I did put in some uh, feedback just because to me, this seems like a bug almost or like an oversight. But let me show you. If I go in and I drop in a, the paste effects, I go to render. I'll turn on the sky alpha and then I'll output test one. So we're going to let the color pass go. And then when we get to the sky alpha, it keeps the landscape in there, which again, it's kind of useless to us. We don't want that. So this is how originally I was making my own. And then I actually had tried out the photo match. So this is obviously kind of annoying if you want to get a particular shot. But if you go to photo match and you pick uh, the examples and tutorials, if you pick something like this and you just hit OK, uh, actually, let me line that up a little bit better. So I'll place the, the point here. I'll go back, maybe scale this down a bit, and we'll just drop that here. So that's good enough. If I hit OK on this, and I go Render, and I go Desktop, and we'll do Test 2. So watch what happens after the color map. So you get the Sky Alpha, and it, it just functions completely different when you use photo match. So the reason why that is, is because Lumion is ignoring this landscape and ignoring this to put that photo back there. This is what I think it is at least. So that photo, all, all that has to be happened to make a landscape and a sky mask is that when it, you hit that render pass, Lumion just throws up some generic image behind it. It's, it is already coded inside of Lumion. It's just that we can't use it in the way that we want, which is pretty frustrating. But like I said, I put in some feedback. So hopefully uh, something comes of that because there is a lot of cool things that Lumion could do. It's just it really sucks when there's a feature that is it's literally in the software. It's just that we have no way of actually getting to it to use it in the way that we want. So I hope that everyone found the video interesting. This was one that I actually was working on for a while, but I had I filmed it like two or three times over the last couple of months just trying to get it right. And this one is I think is at least good enough that I want to share with people and hopefully people can take that to the next level. If you found the video interesting, I'd really appreciate it if you could like the video and also subscribe to the channel if you're not already. If you're interested in learning more about Blender or Unreal Engine, I have a lot of those videos on my channel but I also have a lot of Lumion videos if this is your first time checking us out. For now though, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you for everyone that stopped by the video today. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.